My name is Maarten Hendriksen and today I will present the preliminary results of our investigator initiated research project funded by Advanced Bionics, uh, also on behalf of my uh, co-authors. So this project is about AutoSense. Uh, AutoSense is an automatic classifier that can be found in phonic hearing aids and Advanced Bionics cochlear implants. And it uh, detects the acoustic features of the environment and based on that it classifies the environment into one of the categories listed here. And these different categories, they control, control the noise reduction features of the hearing devices. And in case of hearing aids, they also can uh, make slight adjustments to the gain settings. One of the uh, noise reduction features that is controlled by AutoSense is the directional microphone mode. And the directional microphone mode is switched on when speech is detected uh, in these three categories. AutoSense has been shown to be beneficial for adults, but children encounter different listening situations than adults, and therefore also a pedi pediatric version of AutoSense uh, was developed, and this is called AutoSense Sky. However, there is only limited evidence of the uh, effectivity of this AutoSense Sky in children. And um, my colleagues and I were also a little bit in doubt whether it's a good idea to switch on the directional microphone mode for children in the classroom situation. Of course, a directional microphone can enhance the uh, speech of the teacher in front of the classroom, but it attenuates sound from other directions. And um, in the classroom, it can also be important to understand the classmates and they're usually uh, uh, in off-center positions when listening to the teacher. So if a classmate is saying something, then of course the child can uh, turn his attention to it, to his cla classmate and rotate his head. And then the directional microphone also announces that speech of the, of the classmate. But then first uh, the child needs to be able to detect it if one of his classmates starts talking and also get enough information to determine if it's important to switch his attention to, uh, to the classmate. So in a classroom situation, a directional microphone can be of an advantage, but it can also has, have, have disadvantages. And this is what we wanted to uh, study. And we did a crossover intervention study um, to compare uh, two settings with other sense turn on and off. And I will show today the preliminary results of six children with cochlear implants. They had unilateral or bilateral cochlear implants. So as I said, we compared a setting with AutoSense on and off. Uh, when AutoSense was switched off, uh, the hearing device was also always in the calm situation program, which means it had the omnidirectional microphone setting. When AutoSense was switched on, uh, it switched to directional microphone mode if speech was detected. So in the study we did a listening test with the two settings uh, in the children. Uh, then they, there was a take home period where they tried out the two settings for two weeks each and they filled in questionnaires about this. And then they came back, they did the same listening test again with the two settings and they uh, made a final choice about which setting they wanted to keep. The listening test was implemented in a virtual reality classroom and we have a visual environment and also a matching acoustic environment. Um, the acoustic environment, environment contains a diffuse uh, background noise um, this is a noise we recorded in a real classroom and I'll briefly uh, let you hear a fragment of this. Besides this uh, diffuse background noise, there were also a few uh, point noise sources of pencils and uh, those things, and and there was also reverberation. 
in the virtual reality classroom, uh, there were two tasks implemented that the children had to do. Uh, the first one is that the teacher in front that you see here, um, he said digit triplets and the children had to repeat those uh, so that we could measure the 50% speech perception threshold. And there was also a second task. Uh, there were animal stimuli, the Dutch word for rabbit and tiger. Uh, if they heard rabbit, they had to press the button on the remote with the rabbit on it. And if they had heard tiger, they had to press the button on the other remote. And these animal stimuli were presented from different directions and at two different uh, signal-to-noise ratios. So of course the visual uh, environment was presented via a virtual reality headset and the acoustic environment over 12 uh, loudspeaker ring. So in the results, uh, even for the only the, the six uh, participants, we see that there is a significant effect uh, of autosense on the uh, SRT50 score. Uh, it was a significantly better uh, SRT50 score when autosense was on. We also see that there is a significant decrement in the performance to detect the animal stimuli when autosense was switched on. And <coughs> the children took significantly longer to detect the animal stimuli when autosense was switched on. So we see that autosense uh, sky has a significant benefit for speech intelligibility from the front but also a significant decrement in the ability to detect of excel signals of interest, uh, which is what we expected to happen in a classroom situation. Did the children and their parents notice this in daily life? Um, for the final choice, we can see that five out of six chose uh, the setting with auditons on, uh, but also three out of six indicated that they noticed little or no difference. The three uh, children and parents that didn't notice a difference um, uh, said that they had a better speech intelligibility in noise for all three of them. Uh, one said that they noticed the poor localization and one uh, parent noticed that their child was more alert in a traffic situation with other sense on. So the take home message of this talk is that it is possible to make a more ecologically valid listening test with a virtual reality. Uh, it was also a lot more fun for the participants. The children really enjoyed the uh, virtual reality environment. And we're happy to share uh, our classroom bubble noise recording and uh, perhaps also the 3D model of the classroom if uh, other people can use that. We also showed that Odyssey in Sky has both advantages and disadvantages. Um, for now, the preliminary results seem to indicate that the advantages slightly outweigh the disadvantages, but uh, to draw a conclusion on this, we have to uh, gather more data and also do a more detailed analysis of the questionnaires that the children and parents filled in. So then I'd like to thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, you can ask them now.